Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland and in this short video, another video in our series of videos dealing with relations and functions, uh, we're going to concentrate on what an equivalence class is uh, uh, with respect to relations. Uh, so let's actually just maybe provide a definition of what we mean by an equivalence class. Okay, uh, It's straightforward enough but a definition will always help us uh, in, in trying to understand what these equivalence classes actually represent. Uh, so first of all what we need is to create our equivalence classes we need an equivalence relation so let's just say that we have a relation or so let or be a let's say an 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 equivalence relation it's not just a, a relation it's an equivalence relation let or be an equivalence relation relation okay okay on a set a okay so let or be this equivalence relation on a set a okay uh, well then for for each for each element of A, so for each A that's in A, okay, so for each A in, in A, its equivalence class, its equivalence, its equivalence class, uh, is simply, is simply, okay, uh, the set, the set of members, okay, or elements, members of A, okay, where the member is related is related is related to a okay and we denote it it's denoted it's denoted by by a square bracket a okay something like that okay so let's what were we talking about we're talking about that these equivalence classes so for each element of a there's an equivalence class that it's a member of okay so or there's an equivalence class so for each a there's an equivalence class and what is this equivalence class well it's a set of elements that are in a with the property that the element is related the element oops that the element is related to A. So it's it's all of the elements that are related to A form what's known as the equivalence class. And let's just keep in mind that or is an equivalence relation. So because it's an because or is or is an equivalence relation, equivalence relation, okay, okay it's by default reflexive, symmetric, symmetric, and transitive, okay? Transitive. So let's try to constr let's construct an equivalence relation and let's see what these equivalence classes look like. Okay. So let's say we have a relation. Let's say we have a set A. So let let A equal the set that contains the values one, two, three, four, and five. Let's construct its cross product. Okay. Just take a few seconds to do. Uh, let's list A down here. The column one, two, three, four, five. Let's list A across the top. One, two, three. 4, 5, and let's construct all the ordered pairs. 1 with 1, 1 with 2, 1 with 3, 1 with 4, 1 with 5, uh, 2 with 1, 2 with 2, 2 with 3, 2 with 4, 2 with 5, 3 with 1, 3 with 2, 3 with 3, 3 with 4, 3 with 5, nearly there, 4 with 1, 4 with 2, 4 with 3, Four with four, four with five, uh, let's say five with one, five with two, five with three, five with four, and five with five. Okay, so there's the cross product of A with itself. And we're going to create, choose a relation from here. Okay, so we're going to choose a relation or uh, that has a set of ordered pairs. It's basically going to be a set of ordered pairs. And let's actually have a look at that. I want this relation to be reflexive. So I'm going to have to throw in all of these values down here. 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5. So I'll have to throw in 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5. Okay. Uh, and I also want it to be symmetric. Okay, but let's actually draw the graph, the digraph. Let's say we have 1, we have 2. We have three, we have four, we have five. So it's reflexive, so I have these self loops on every element. That's important on every element because it's reflexive. Uh, I want it to be symmetric, okay? Well, it's 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 vacuously symmetric at the moment, but let's make it actually concrete symmetric, okay? So let's put in an edge from five to one. Okay, so if it's symmetric, because we can go from 5 to 1, we should be able to go from 1 to, one to 5. So there needs to be an edge back in that direction. And let's do another one. Let's say we can go from, um, let's say we go from 4 to 3. Okay, so because we go from 4 to 3, we need to be able to go from 3 to 4 if it's going to be, if it's going to be, uh, oops, <coughs> if it's going to be symmetric. And uh, let's say we can go from 4 to 2. 
so let's say we can go from four to two and now also we must be able to go from two from two we go, sorry we're going from three to four here okay so we're going from three three from three to two and we're going from two to three okay so now these are all the symmetric all the symmetric pairs but now we can do double hops we can go from four to three and from three to two if it's transitive we should be able to go directly from four into two so let's put in four to two and then finally you can see we can go from two to three and from three to four if it's transitive i should be able to go back so now i'm going back here so now what i'm saying is i can go from two two directly two directly into four which now makes this relation this relation